OG Duffy, find myself in Tunbridge Wells. So we're gonna do a games hunt, we're gonna do the CEX, and we'll do all the charity shops and see what we can find. It's a Royal Tunbridge Wells, so it's quite a, a posh area, a bit of money in it, so never know me luck, guys, especially in the charity shops. Am I in for a surprise or not? Let's find out. First charity shop I come to is Mind. We go in here and I make my way to the end of the store where the books and CDs etc are in a hope of finding some video games but it was not to be this was dry of any video game title at all but this caught me eye look very old Monopoly board there oh yes many a family punch up over Christmas on that board game Next up, walking down here, got a British Heart Foundation. Now, my British Heart Foundation uh, in my local town is very, very overpriced with the games. So uh, I was hoping that this one was a bit more uh, realistic, shall we say, in terms of their pricing structure. Pleased to say there was some games in here, but you know what? Nothing really caught my eye. There were some PC CD games, but I don't go in for those. Uh, and as for the PS2 games, they were all SingStar and a Pro Evo Soccer, so I avoid it. Couple of charity shops down there so far, but unfortunately not a lot. Had some games in the second one, but uh, it wasn't to be, so no decent titles there. But onwards and upwards, guys, the day is young. Hospices of Hope. Now, I've been a few of these in Kent. I don't know if they're just a Kent-based um, charity shop or if they're national, if you know. Let me know, drop in the comments. Anyway, popped in here. The usual rows of DVDs and the CDs at the very top there. But unfortunately, nothing from moi. But as I always say, you've got to keep looking, people. You've got to keep looking. Next up is Oxfam here. Now you spot this old deer here. She was racing in there to get to the retro games. I knew it. So I had to race down the back of the store and beat her to it. And I'm glad to say I did. <laughs> but was there any games there? That is the question, as always, people. Anyway, I saw this, the video game trivia. I picked this up um, and, and looked at it. It's obviously Game Boy, so it looks cool. I might be doing a live quiz nearer Christmas on the channel. Keep your eyes and ears peeled for that, people. I might, I might not. We shall see. Anyway, scanning the shelves here. And uh, it's yet to make a proper appearance, but I'm sure it does. Oh yes, you know what I'm talking about. The one, the only, the game we find everywhere. There it is, FIFA 14. Oh my God. Anyway, next up, Cancer Research UK. I find this shop very hit and miss. The one nearest me is uh, is quite well priced, but the one next nearest to me is very overpriced. So I'm guessing that the store managers do their own pricing in each store. So I'm hoping that's the case. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know. Sure, some of you have experience of charity shops. A few Star Wars bits in here. Look, Stormtrooper there and uh, Darth Maul himself sat on his moped. <laughs> Giving it some revs on his 50cc. Hospice in Wild, another charity shop popping here. Because it'd be rude not to. You guys already knew that. Scan of the shelves here. And there, look. Trivial Pursuit on the top shelf. How many copies of Trivial Pursuit do we see in charity shops? What is the one item you always find in a charity shop, no matter what? Drop in a comment, it's always good to share your experiences, people. Anyway, scanning the shelves in there, a few cassette tapes there. Something I'm starting to see a few of creeping through. Um, yeah, worth keeping an eye on for some of them titles, I believe. Anyway, look here, some PS2 games, but unfortunately, they're all sports titles. As you know, sports titles, PS2, uh, ain't worth a penny, mate, really, are they? Shame, really. But onwards and upwards and down to them bits at the bottom here. As you can see, they double stacked everything in these boxes. So I checked underneath to see if there was any little hidden gems. Because you just never know, guys. You've got to keep your, your hope alive. But unfortunately, on this occasion, nada. Not a thing. Oh, well. Onwards and upwards, guys. Off to CEX next, but I think it's beer o'clock first, you know. And to the local Weatherspoons, known as the Opera House. I tell you what, stunning Weatherspoons. And a nice cold pint of Lady Stella. Oh, yes. Oh, gee, Duffy. Stroke came to light.
As always, we usually start in the window of any CEX and take a look at these games here. As you can see, he's got some N64 loose cartridges there. The, uh, the Pokemon Stadium is going for £15, but as you can see there, I'm doing that in a package bundle. And remember, the prices you see over on the OG Duffy website include free PMP in the UK. Just saying. <laughs> Treasures, rare finds, join the fun, blow your mind. Oh, yes, cause I'm worth it. Cheers with beer, gaming lore, collecting gems, and so much more. Now we have stopped to look at these before and we've discussed briefly the Steam Deck which got very positive praise from you good people at home. But you've got here as well the Legion Go and the Asus. Now I'm missing a trick with these things, I don't really get them, I understand what a Steam Deck is and I'm assuming that a Legion Go and an Asus does exactly the same sort of thing, but does it still have access to the Steam Store and the rest of it? Let me know in the comments and if so, which of these sort of systems that they're doing at the moment is the best one? Cheers! <laughs> More loose N64 carts here and uh, Konami's Castlevania, £62 for a loose cart. Always retain their value nicely, them Castlevania games. Yes, indeed. Assassin's Creed 3 here on the PS3 with that nice statue for £90. Still haven't played an Assassin's Creed game, you know. I know, I'm dreadful. And a look at the Nintendo DS. I always look at the DS shelf because I'm looking for an Indiana Jones game. And I've not seen it in an absolute age, and it's not, I think it's the staff of something or other. But anyway, this caught my eye here, Final Fantasy, what's that, 4? Uh, yeah, um, would be great for a long journey and everything else, I would imagine, especially on a DS, a nice sort of lengthy game. Now, my experience of Final Fantasy was back on the PS1, when Final Fantasy 7 got released. My God, what a game and experience that was. We'd played nothing quite like it before. I remember getting it and I was just blown away by how good, how immersive, how sort of thematic and cinematic the whole thing it was. So it was great, 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 great game. I've still got loads of sort of um, games like that in, in that, that spin-off, but do you know what? I haven't played many really since 7. Should I do, and which one should I visit? Drop me in the comments, please. And now to look at the Xbox 360, because I know so many of you collect for this system. So uh, I've got to start looking at it, really, for your sake. Not so much for mine, because I'm more PS3, as you know. But anyways, take a quick look at the Xbox 360 range in this store. I would say Xbox 360 collecting is currently more popular than PS3. I judge that based on the sort of the the people over on the Discord, the OG Duffy Discord. So many of you guys collect for Xbox 360. It's very, very popular. Of course, PS3 is popular, but I just think the Xbox 360's got the edge. Anyway, the Ryzen games here. Took a look at these. That's Ryzen 3 there, that one. That's £10. But you've got this one here, Ryzen 2, the special edition, £8. Um, I've got Ryzen 2 on the PS3, but I've yet to play it. Looks pirate themed. Looks pretty good. I'm just hoping it is a decent game. I'm sure I'll get round to it. But are they well priced and how do they compare to the PS3 titles that are the same? Drop in the comments. And over to the Wii U section, because obviously I'm looking for that full Wii U PAL set. So uh, still a few to get, but I am getting there. Only a handful of games in this one. How's your branch doing for uh, Wii U games? You noticing a disappearance or not? And then, of course, onto the PS3, probably my favourite section to look at in any CEX at the moment, because there's so many great games at so many great prices. One other thing I did notice in the Tunbridge Wells CEX was the amount of games of the same title. Like, look at these Call of Duty, I know they're always popular, I know you always get stacks of like that sort of title, but Dishonored there, look, how many there? Five, six? Crisis 2, Crisis, look at all them Call of Duties, <laughs> look, ghosts. Oh. The only positive with this is it means you can sort of cherry pick and get one that's a nice cover, a nice case, and then cherry pick your manuals and stuff. But uh, yeah, there was an awful lot of repeats in here. Uh, but not just for this. I mean, look there, a prime example, Little Big Planet. Look how many copies of Little Big Planet they had. 
Madness, mate. Madness. Continuing along the shelves here, and again, LA Noir, quite a few copies of that. But such a great game, still such a great price. I've got to stop talking about that game. I always mention it all the time. Oh, yes, indeed. But um, I do have some pickups in here, people, so do stay tuned to the end because we'll go through them as normal with a pint, of course, because it'll be rude not to, and you have to stay hydrated, but you already knew that. People, I am sure. Um, now, looking at the, the virtual tennis games there, oh, I love virtual tennis. I think it's such a great, great game. Now, this caught my eye, Wolfenstein. I had two copies here, and unfortunately, neither of them had a manual else I would have gone in for it. Now we're looking at the PSP here and there was a couple of real standout titles for me that looked pretty awesome indeed. Uh, now this one here, right? Capcom Classic Collection Reloaded. £12 for PSP. I don't go for PSP games, but look at that list of games right there. This is a who's who of classic arcade games real real quality there now a question for you in the comments out of all of them games you can choose only one which one you're going for and why tough tough question i know but mate oh i wouldn't know where to begin to be honest such a great great collection that one at a guess though i would guess that street fighter 2 might get an awful lot of those votes and then there was this just uh, a couple along from the shelf there. And this is Dungeon Siege Dethrone Evil. Now, absolutely nothing about this, but on the back there, it looked a bit Diablo like, you know? Um, I don't, as I say, don't go for PSP games, but for a tenner, is that a game worth picking up, do you think? If you're a PSP collector, do let me know in the comments, as always. Uh, so, yeah, quite a couple of nice little titles there for the PSP. But if I had to choose this or that Capcom Classics, it's going to be the Capcom for me, I'm afraid, all day long. Leaving them behind, we move on to the PS2 section. And uh, this caught my eye. It's something we had a discussion about briefly on the recent vlog. And for the life of me, I could not remember her name. And, of course, it is um, Halle Berry, isn't it? Yeah, and the other one was Michelle Pfeiffer, and then someone in the comments also named all the original cat women from the original Burt Ward and Adam West um, Batman TV show. Honestly, the knowledge you guys have out there never fails to impress me, it really doesn't. Um, yeah, we should do a quiz team. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I digress as always, uh, and moving along back onto the PS2 shelf. Now, this caught my eye here, Futurama. As you can see, it was £28. And the reason I've stopped at this, A, because it's a great, great TV show, but not just that. The animation on that show really, really was impressive. I loved it. It just looked fresh. It looked good for the time, you know. But anyway, is there a version of this, and is it on the Xbox, that is has two different covers? two different colour covers and one colour is worth more than the other let me know in the comments again because as I say your knowledge never surpasses yourselves guys come on you can do it let me know and this surprised me not seen one of these in um, CX before a demo disc for two pound I never knew they took these in on trade, or did, was this an accidental trade-in? What do you guys think? But I've never seen that before. Or is it just me? Anyway, onwards and upwards. Let's see what we get. Game hunt finished, guys. As you know, there's only one way to finish a game hunt. Oh, yes. Let's go get a pint, stay hydrated, keep fresh, and then get back to OG Duffy Towers and show you my pickups, people. Anyway, guys, cheers. Onwards and upwards. Back from Tunbridge Wells, I'm going to show you my pickups. Oh, yes, I am. Now, firstly, a quick sort of overview of the CEX store there in um, Tunbridge Wells. It wasn't bad, but there was one major problem with it. And I can see why they've done it, but from my perspective, it doesn't help me. Um, in doing what I do, because behind all the good retro, like your say, Sega Mega Drive, your SNES and all that sort of stuff, was all behind the counter where they serve you. 
not in the glass cabinets that we're used to seeing. So to peruse the sort of thing, you have to sort of stand at the counter and be like peering around the staff to get a view and all that. So unfortunately, getting camera shots of all that stuff is a bit of a ball ache, so I didn't really bother, to be fair. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little tour there. We had a great weekend in Tunbridge. Well, a great couple of nights there. And um, the charity shops also were a little bit disappointing. Oh, yes, they were. The reason being, I thought there's a bit of money there in Tunbridge Wells, so people will be donating their goodies to the charity shops. I'm sure they do. I mean, if you're there looking for sort of designer label clothing, you'll probably do all right. But I'm not looking for designer label clothing. I'm looking for classic retro video games or PS3 or whatever I can find, really, that is half decent that isn't FIFA or another sports-like title. Oh, yes. Anyway, I did get some pickups, which I will show you real, real soon. But you know what time it is, people? Oh, yes, it's beer o'clock. Let's get hydrated. Nothing too exciting on the beer front. Just my good friend, Lady Stella. And yes, I'm being uncouth. I'm going to have it straight out the can. <laughs> it's ice cold because it's a warm old evening here. Oh, yes, indeed. Anyway, guys, cheers. Let's get to them all important pickups. And the first pickup I'm gonna show you is from a charity shop. Weren't a bad buy as it goes. The first pickup is for the Wii. Oh yes, the Nintendo Wii. Um, I think it's got some real quirky little games on that system. So it's a system I definitely do keep an eye out for because like I say, with them unique controllers and everything, there's always some great games. Anyway, I got this in a charity shop. It was £1.50, and it is that. Brothers in Arms, and as you can see there, it's double time because there's two of the same game series in there, okay? Uh, they never asked to be squad leaders, but they had no choice. So Paris, it's a video game based on a true story, according to the cover. How true that is, I don't know. But as you can see there, there's two games in this one sleeve. So we've got Brothers in Arms Earned in Blood and Brothers in Arms to Hill 30. Um, the sleeve they come in was very nice condition. Pop that up there for a second. Um, and there we go. So yeah, £1.50 for them. I'll be honest, I was quite pleased with that. All are complete. Um, yeah, I'm not going to show you the manuals to all these games I've picked up because hey, that's dull and it's boring. <laughs> now, Brothers in Arms games, I'll be absolutely honest, I've never played one of these before. I'm guessing it looks a bit sort of Call of Duty-like, but obviously not online, I wouldn't imagine. I imagine it's sort of, yeah, just sort of a story mode. Anyway, £1.50. I'm not sure what this trades in for at CEX, but I think to buy it, you're looking at £5 plus, I think. I could be right. I could be wrong. Anyway, Brothers in Arms, £1.50. Two Wii games, not leaving that sitting there. Good start, I thought. That was the first pickup there from a charity shop. So, all in all, as I said, I was holding out a lot of promise and a lot of hope for the charity shops there in Tunbridge Wells. But unfortunately, that was the one and only charity shop pickup. As you saw from the video there, I mean, there was loads of your FIFAs and Just Dance and all your nonsense like that. But hey, I'm not in for all that. So, all the rest of these pickups have come via CEX. Bit of a mixed bag. Of course, there's some PS3 in there because it would be rude not to. There is a PS1 game that I'm particularly pleased about. But in hindsight, looking back at it, I tell you, you'll see soon enough and I'll have your thoughts on it. And uh, another Wii game as well. So let's get to it. These were my CEX pickups. The first pickup from the CEX was a game that cost me a lot of money. <laughs> 75 pence. Honestly. Right, okay. Um, anyway, here we go. It is Telly Addicts. Telly Addicts there with him. What was his name? Well, sorry, not what was his name. What is his name? He's oh, Noel Edmonds. Noel Edmonds. Because he, he done that other one with the red boxes and that. But anyway... Telly Addicts. This was a quiz show back in sort of the late 80s, maybe early 90s. Um, it, was, it was a quiz show where they'd show you clips from TV shows and ask questions. All right? So basically, in a nutshell, it's a quiz game with video clips. 
Um, I'm really into sort of the, the quiz games and stuff at the moment. I really am. And they're just so cheap. I mean, the idea, what I like about them, I put them on out here on a Saturday evening, have a few beers or whatever. Mrs. OG comes and plays sometimes and stuff. So it's good fun. But what I remember most about Teleaddicts when it was on the TV once a week was my dad, bless his heart. He used to say to me, we ain't watching that. <laughs> Why? People who watch that show and play that show, they're pathetic, they're bad. Why? What's, what's wrong with it? He said, no. He said, they shouldn't have a show like that. He said, people sat down on their backsides all day watching telly and then doing quizzes about it. He said, it's wrong. <laughs> and actually, you think about it, he's actually got a point, is not he? But hey, different times and all that. Anyway, 75 pence. It's like new, but hey, you probably already knew it was going to be like new. I'm looking forward to giving it a spin. I really am. Oh, I'll tell you, Alex. Bit of Noel Edmonds. Is he old Noel Edmonds? Yeah, Noel Edmonds. I'm thinking Noel Diamonds for a minute there. Anyway, first off, 75 pence. I ain't complaining. And we find ourselves over by the PS3 collection. Those that watch the channel know already I bang on and on and on about the PS3. But hey, you've heard it all before, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Anyway, the first game is this one here, as he says, reaching out for it. Uh, this was a whole one pound, this one. And it's what I say, there's some banging games to be had, cheapest chips. Now, this is not a rare one. It's something you, I, you see in most CEXs, to be fair. But for all this time I've been looking at PS3 games, I thought in my head, I thought, I've got that. But I looked at it again this time, and I thought, I'll check with my app, because I've got an app that lists them all. And I looked, and now I haven't got it. And it is this, Hitman Absolution. Hitman Absolution. How many lives will you take to save one? I'm not talking about one whole pound either. So all in all, I was quite pleased with that. I do seem to remember playing a Hitman game many, many moons ago. What system I played it on, etc. I really, for the life of me, just cannot remember. But it says, you're age of 47, the most dangerous man alive. Some boast, innit? <laughs> Hide in plain sight, improvise as necessary. Create your own contracts and challenge the globe. Okay. Hey, sounds entertaining. Uh, it says here this was the winner of 25 E3 awards. So, you guys in the past have mentioned this to me as well. It's obviously got a good name. It's, yeah, okay. It's got a great name. Is that a good pick up for a quid? Comment, as always, people. Let me know your thoughts on Hitman Absolution. And sticking with the PS3. Again, this is another game that you could probably pick up in most CEXs, if I'm being absolutely honest. And again, I thought I had it. <laughs> All this time, I've been going along thinking, oh, I've got that, got that. I haven't, and I'll check the app again. And uh, good job I've got that app, really. Anyway, is this Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, Guns of the Patriots. Now, we all know Metal Gear Solid. I mean, I remember it from the very first one on the PS1. In the Middle East. And I'll tell you something recently, well, probably about a year ago, but, but it's recent to me. About a year ago, I rebooted up the original PS1 version of this, or not this, but of this game series. And I'll tell you what, I don't remember it being so hard. The stealth bit and all that, I remember it being so, so playable, but my God, I struggled. I really did struggle with it. Kept getting caught, you know, ring. Yeah, kept catching me out. But anyway, yeah, so that one, a fiver, that one. Obviously, it's number four in the series. A legendary soldier, a final mission. The ultimate sacrifice. Oh, yes. Who writes these strap lines? God knows. But anyway, one thing about this, and I said I'm not showing manuals on discs and all that, but, 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 I'm taking the, uh, the manual out on this one for a minute. Because I tell you what, it's a thick old manual. It really, really is. And the thing is, right, I'm looking at it, and it's not several languages. It's all English, all the way through that one. But it's, it's quite a nicely laid out manual. There's sort of a bit of, sort of a comic book inside it and stuff like that. So, yeah. The days when we used to have to read manuals, kids. Oh, yes. Didn't get these tutorials like you get today, where they walk you through everything. Yeah, wipe your nose for you. <laughs> Not back then, guys. We had to work. We had to read. Yeah. 
it's something I should do more often of now, really, because I'll tell you something, right? I put on these older chains and I just jump in. I don't bother with the instructions myself anymore. Uh, too many games? Not enough time. And the final pickup I had was for the PlayStation 1. I mean, the PS1 is such a classic console in itself, but I asked to have a look at it, because obviously you do, it's all beyond the counter, and he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of an effort, it seemed, but anyway, they got it down for me. I had a look, I said, yeah, yeah, that'll do, that'll do. But on hindsight, I don't know if I should have been a bit more fussy with it. But anyway, it is what it is now, and it's a game I will definitely play, so anyway, what is it? We're asking. It's that Medieval 2. Total of £22, that one. And I'll show you shortly um, what I'm not happy about with it. But all in all, it, it looks quite nice, doesn't it? It doesn't look too bad. And it's going to sit very nicely with my other Medieval game, which is, of course, Medieval 1. Still got the, uh, the original controller um, advert sticker on that. Do you remember that? But anyway, these were great little games. I never played number two. I remember playing number one. It's sort of like a, a platformy type 3D S game, and it was it's such a it was it was unique. It was good. Got very very good reviews. Now this one, 19th century London is held in the grasp of the satanic Lord Palathorn who has shook the dead from their graves and unleashed a blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I'm looking forward to playing this. But I'm now going to give you a close-up of this. And I ask you the question in the comments, would you have bought this or would you have left it? Too late now, I've bought it. But anyway, let's take a look. So this is it here, the Medieval 2. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad. And I did ask to see it, and they opened it up and showed me. I kept the receipt there in case I want to return it. Um, as you can see there, the disc looks all right. Um, no major scratches. You've got your light scratches on there, but hey, that's come. That's quite quite normal, isn't it, for a, a, a PS1 disc? Um, and then you've got your booklet there, because as you know, I always go for a manual. But it's this, look. So as you can see there, look at the manual. There's this here. Now... That actually hasn't come off the manual. And if you look very closely, if I pick away at that, that will peel off. So this weekend, as part of my weekend vlog, I'll probably treat that. So the manual, I can probably get back to some sort of decent order or state, should I say. But the rest of the manual's fine, as you can see there. It's just a cover of it. Ah, oh, and there, look, it's sort of stuck together. So I would guess this got wet at some point. But look, also on this cover, you can see where it got wet and it's gone through. So, where the PlayStation sticker is there, I didn't actually see it that closely. So it's not that bad, really. Is that a pass for you or not, guys? That concludes the game hunt there from Tunbridge Wells in Kent. It's not that far from where I live, so to be honest, the odd Saturday, I might just say to Mrs. OG, we'll jump in the motor, we'll go and explore it. I will be back there for sure, because there's plenty of charity shops, although it was, weren't rich pickings, but at the end of the day, it's a change of scenery. And as I always say, when you're hunting in charity shops, it's the day you stop looking, it's the day you'll miss them. <laughs> so anyway, got Medieval 2 there, it was the most expensive, £22 that one. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, total of what, fiver? Okay. Hitman, absolute absolution. It is absolution, yes. A quid. Telly addicts, <laughs> 75 pence. And of course, that for £1.50. Now, in the comments, guys, out of all of them games, which one do you think I should visit first? And why? Do tell me. Anyway, I've been OG Duffy. You have been awesome as always. And I'm signing off, guys, until the very next one. Now, in between times, like, share, do all that good stuff. And of course, you know it, comment. I love your comments. What pickups have you had of late, if any? Have you had any charity shop wins? Any PS3 games that are currently mega cheap on the PS3 in CEX that you would advise I get? Because I do like your little tips. They're very, very useful indeed. Anyway, as I say, I've been OG Duffy, and I'll see you all on the next one, guys. This lady, Stella Artois Beer, is for you, laters.